Aš esu Dalia Aleksandra Vičiūtė, Lietuvos kultūros tyrimų instituto komparatyvisinių kultūros tyrimų skyriausų doktorantė. Ir šiandieną pristatysiu savo temą ir kalbėsiu anglų kalbą. So, hello to everyone. The title of my presentation is Aberrations by Jurgis Baltrušaitis in the Mythopoetics of Chirlonis Paintings. In this presentation, while bringing to light the conception of aberration proposed by art historian Jurgis Baltrushaitis the Younger, the Lithuanian expatriate in France, I'm going to focus on its precursory manifestations in painting of Mikolaus Konstantinas Chirlonis. For this purpose, uh, I have chosen one of his musical paintings of sonatic cycles, Sonata the Sixth or Sonata of the Stars. The cycle of two paintings, Allegro and Andante, from the late artistic period of Chirlonis, created in 1908, proposes many possibilities of interpretation, from the emphasis on its universal visionary value, leading towards its distinctive existential symbolism, to its plasticity equivalent to musical expression and rhythmic dynamics. Nevertheless, not focusing much on its musical presuppositions, I would like to offer another approach, an aberrative look into the main theme, which is the cosmic order, intertwined with the elements of nature. At the same time, by employing the operational concept in the analysis of this cycle, I would like to actualize the contribution of Jurgis Baltrushaitis to the study of nature, painting, and other humanistic and epistemological fields. To begin with, the very term of aberration historically has been used to refer to a number of related phenomena concerning the propagation of light in moving bodies. In its primary sense, th this term belongs to the field of astronomy and is used to describe irregularities between the apparent and actual positions of the luminary objects. In addition to this, there are other types of aberration as material effects related to celestial bodies such as chromatic aberration, diffraction aberration, geometric aberration and others. There we can see uh, a case of chromatic aberration of the Orion constellation. It is one of the most recognizable constellations in the, in the night sky. The aberration here, also known as purple fringe, is a dispersion problem that causes white light to split into its respective colors of the rainbow. It's a failure to focus the image equally across all spectral wavelengths. With longitudinal chromatic aberration, red, blue, and green colors are focused on different planes. If we focus on blue, we will have purple fringing. If we, if we focus on red, we will have blue halos that are other atmospheric optical phenomena, namely circle-shaped rings of white or colored light around the sun, moon, or other luminous bodies caused by refraction through ice crystals in the atmosphere. There we can also see blurriness, aberration caused secondary shadows, and other, and other visual imperfections. Other optical aberrations such as coma and field curvature will create weird and elongate stars. The comatic aberration is named for its comet-like uh, shape instead of a star. Also sagittal or tangential astigmatism as the absence of focus in, and finally astronomical distortion that generalizes the concept of Baltrushaitis scientific thought in which the term of aberration is transferred from the explorations of celestial sphere to investigations of the mental sphere. Although recreated in its very essence and nature, aberration, according to Baltrushaitis, maintains its relation with observational optics. Uh, since uh, the description of a constellation unlocks the aberrational model, uh, we can mm, briefly discuss it. A constellation is an area in the celestial sphere in which uh, a group of visible stars forms a perceived outline, typically representing an animal or a mythological subject, such as Orion the Great Hunter, Leo the Lion, or Taurus the Bull. 
So is aberration, which represents an inner associative quality of an object, thus helping to navigate in the rich imagery of the surrounding world. Constellations are easily recognizable patterns primarily based on mythology, most notably inspired from Metamorphosis of Ovid. The stellar iconography of the night sky reminds of the icons or symbols of the ancient Middle Eastern, Greek and Roman mythologies. However, Baltrushaitis applied the concept of aberration in a slightly different way, not in astronomical studies. He transformed them into a myth-making area spread from the, from the prolific aberrational source. He proved that distortion can occur not only inside, but also in mind. And contrary to astronomical studies, a mistaken representation, an illusory effect, and the aberrative observational approach itself can become a fruitful instrument to analyze objects th through gaze. Here we can see the covers of the book of Baltrushaitis on aberrations, or depraved perspectives, as he called them, uh, which appeared in 1957. English version in, version in 1989. That he explores through different epistemological areas of human cognition and at different levels of attainment of knowledge. In his thought, the aberrative depravities of sight and mind correspond to a reality of appearances and possess an undeniable faculty of transfiguration. It is one of the major aspects of his conception of life of forms. At first, he, he explored physiognomy as the science of man and his passions, then the laboratory world, uh, the stones and mir minerals as natural curiosities, considered uh, to be reflections of the world in ancient cultures, as well as paintings created on stones of, for example, agate or marble, whose the very structure constitute a scenery of landscape, presenting a skillful in interplay between matter and subject. And finally, the Gothic cathedral structures in which he saw interfaces with nature, especially with the archetype of the forest. Here we can read a fragment from the notes of Leonardo da Vinci, quoted in the book of Baltrushaitis, which he has chosen as a leitmotif. It's an evocation of a painting by a Flemish artist of the 17th century, Mathieu Dubois, in which one can easily be lost, overwhelmed by its rich imagery. The wandering of living uh, figures and the ones from the stone intertwined with each other in a continuous lamentation like in the ringing of bells of towns daringly condemned for their sins, at the, t at the same time echoing the fall of man. This enigmatic language of images involves history and logic right ne next to the symbolistic worldview and create deviations. Aborative Identification applies not only to this painting, but also to a vast epistemological field of human knowledge through approaches of scientific exe exe exegesis, morphological analysis, and assimilation. Thus, by assuming these approaches, I'm going to explore the paintings of Chirlones and discuss the role of operation in his painting cycle, Sonata of the Stars. It is the work that perfectly correlates with the idea of aberration, which, is, which in its primary sense is an astronomical term. Here, only from the first glance at the opening part of his diptych, called Allegro, we can get an impression of a mysterious cosmological transcendental vision related to processuality, flow, and transformation of the universe, very close to the world of legends and myths. Leading from symbolism to the abstract art on the border between material and spiritual, it opens up as a prolific area for aberrational interpretations. Uh, here, new ontological perspectives emerge besides the celestial and stellar horizons, opening up as a bold postulation of the identity between the spirit and nature almost similarly to the Romanticism ideas of Friedrich Schelling, 
who thought of nature as a self-purpose and independent unity of all phenomena. Allegro, as the first movement of the sonatic cycle, refers to a repetition in a circular pattern, a cyclic form. Bearing the structural sonatic model in mind, we can thi think of cyclic time structure as well as of the astronomical cycle, caught in the music musical compositional rhythmics. Here, fulfilling the musical model and as if contradicting the static nature of painting itself, the time is not a st at a standstill, but vitally flowing. It is the birth of a spatial time structure based on dynamic principles of music, contrasts, and different but complementary melodic motives. Due to the fluidity of forms, the superpositions of planes, and abstraction, the structure of the painting guides to the idea of optical mirage. mirage. The deceptive appearances can be easily identified with the myth of Fata Morgana, the fairy of Arthurian legend, a mirage or myth maker, deviating images producing distorted visions. At the same time, the placement of a triangular prism shaped figure at the center implies the Newtonian genesis of the discovery of spectrum. Thus, by employing the aberrational lens, one could see similarities not only with optical or atmospheric phenomena, but also, also with the other elements of nature. The movement of the triangle oscillating as if affected by the spherical distortion, enabled to focus the, the various wavelengths of light, is an allusion, allusion to the vital dynamics of human and nature alike. The meanderings of the waves create a shifting scenery reminiscent of both, both the vastness of the sea and the luminescence of the stellar expanses. The revolving spheres spinning in the emptiness could be both cosmic objects such as planets drawing, drawing wandering trajectories around the triangle as well as sea spray washing its edges. The, this rotational movement revealed the dynamics of the planetary motion together with the fluctuations of the sea swell. The deep sky, the universe, has much in common with water, as the space finds its aberrative analogies in such titles as the ocean of the emptiness or the deserted sea. Thus, Celestial, aquatic, and stellar spheres merge among themselves into a creative artistic flow. The triangular, triangular compositional sh scheme reminds of a pyramid as well as of a prism, refracting the sunlight into colors. By applying the aberrative point of view, slightly elongating the prism and saturating its structure with marine compositional elements, it, an, it can also present it, itself as a sail of a ship, alluding to the human existence, balancing between being and non-being, as if billowing in the cosmic nebula. In this way, the flutter of the sail reveals the emanation of existence at the threshold of eternity. The eternal aspect in its turn and falls in the concept of cosmic temporality, especially talking about the stars. The star emit, emitted light in the past that will form the image observed in the present. Moreover, time would speed up and slow down around cosmological bodies with different masses and velocities, not mentioning cosmological time dilatation and other subtleties of cosmos. The bar paradoxes of temporalities indicate not only the relativity of time, but also casts a doubt on the reliability of observation. The bands of cosmic mist spread out like rays of the sunlight, refract its light unevenly, dispersing different colors of light in which primary colors of yellow, red, and blue are turned into their mild shades half-toning them with cyan, magenta, and yellow-orange mix, or the color of amber. The tertiary compositional yellow-greenish tone is dominated by the second tint, secondary tints of bluish-violet or purple. 
purple spots emerging amid pale golden strands remind of the recently discussed chromatic aberration, also known as purple, purple fringing. The dispersion of light alongside refraction distributes the spectral colors, but we can easily presume that it was precisely the blue as the color of marine subaquatic sub medium that the painter was focusing on, on which in turn resulted the cosmic purple fringing effect. As light alone is responsible for the color, so is the sun in this scenery expressing the aspiration towards spirituality, rising that, uh, just in the middle, as if divided into the cosmic and terrestrial spheres, affected by the sagittal movement of the apex arrow of the prism, the transparency of which ensures the perfect medium for the merging of the two worlds. Apart from the sagittal and tangential aberrations around, surrounded by a shell of darker diaphanous planes and thread of dusts, clouds, that unwind from it, the sun as the central bright region at the core of galaxy is represented as if with a halo or nimbus of stars and star clusters, clusters arrayed above and below the disk. Taking a closer look, an eye emerges right in the front enclosed in the triangle. Implying the idea of the divine triangle, the painting immediately offers a new viewpoint into it. The eye-shaped holes could be identified with the holes of ho cosmic structures and openings of constellations. Easily deceiving, uh, reminding of other entities having the same shape, the structural, structural points of galaxies where the stars emerge. But just at as the dark woods in galaxies, as particular places where exploding stars cluster, th this eye conceals as much as it reveals. An eye enclosed in a triangle symbolizes the mystery of the Holy Trinity and the unity of the three aspects of God. Thus, the clouds and light echo in association with the divine sphere. A horizontal longitudinal strip divides the composition of the painting into two unequal parts, like a horizon line cut out of a patch of a cosmic expanse. The line crossing one third of the drawing reminds of the Fibonacci spiral, the aesthetic pictorial principle of the rule of thirds. The hazy band of a constellation-like thread, as if marking the visual path of stellar motion, running through the third of the composition is a stylistic motif which, by the approach of aberration, can be identified with architectural free structure, in this case dominated by stellar metopes. Looking through an aberrative lens, the structure of stars gleam forms a pediment of the triangular portico with this cosmological temple. Structural, almost architectural division of the composition expresses the existential dynamics of the unknown, the implicit, the muted. Right besides extending do downward from the st second stellar horizon, like earthly pillars, there could be seen four golden threads pointing toward the earth, reminding of the four cardinal directions of threat or the threads of life. In such close association, there are also related the terrestrial horizon line, line echoing the stellar farther, farthest reach of the universe. Likewise, architectural spaces complementing each other. A bird-like figure of an angel, recurring in the majority of Chirlone's works, above the compositional triangle culminates the scene. Through this very process of aberration by implementation of a concrete figure into the abstract visual structure, we can unveil an almost biblical revelation following the lines from the Acts of Apostles, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. This figure could also be identified with the third person of the Holy Trinity who at the beginning of creation glided over the waters, in this case, over marine and cosmic elements reaches. Thus, it can be deduced that these two origins of world forming a close fusion provide not only a great artistic potential, but also are the sources for creating, 
creative imagination. The second part of the sonatic diptych represents a parallel sequence with slight changes. The dynamic art architectonics of Allegro is slowed down by the monumentality of Andante, presenting a more restrained, calmer rhythm. Unfolding at a relatively moderate pace, this work offers as much operational equivalence of a spiritual, cosmic, universal realm as the previous case. As in the former part, this section, in this section the geometrical forms prevail. Once again, the triangular prism can be identified with a triangular pyramid, while the solar disk is substituted by a planetary sphere. If the compositional triangle in Allegro is as if moving, in Andante it moderates, becoming almost immo immovable. The bands of nebula continue wrapping the space, but already calmer, smoother, dissipating from the cosmic vortex. Yet suddenly this apparently light composition is disturbed by a mysterious bar-shaped structure, heavy like an anchor hook, like a symbol of the unbearable burden of life. Beside the aberrative form of anchor, a hope uh, of hope and faith, or the pressure of a human existence, the very theme of this painting suge suggests other strategies for, of decoding the main idea. With its prominent bar of stars, a material cutting across its central section and spiral arms, this enigmatic structure of bluish-purple hue leads up the star trail to the morpho morphological structure of a barred spiral galaxy. Like this type of stellar association, this compositional fragment has a loosely wound barred sch scheme with an interpretation of one edge of a bent head like a reminiscence of a question mark the other dropping loosely downwards, bearing in mind that our home galaxy is classified as a barred sp spiral galaxy, this, this image perfectly represents a coherent representation of the planet, of the planet Earth with an unusually looking st stylized stretch of the Milky Way galaxy extending just above, as if uh, covering or permeating it by its sagittal movement and massive burdensome immensity. Using a lens of operational thought, we could assume that a sudden intervention of the anchor-like galaxy into a familiar, familiar terrestrial environment po poses a question about the meaning of one's own life. Even more, it affronts the spectator with a demanding inquiry of the final destination of the universe. The movement of the painter's eye from the changing macro and micro st structures offers a broad, almost panoramic view with all its deviations and distortions. Answers seem to be deferred, hard to grasp, promising not much, as referred by the same figure of an angel or a divine providence itself at this time with his head sl slightly bent down as if reflecting the fragility of human in front of the universe. The color choice also confirms the gloomy, intangible atmosphere, as if due to the star clouds, cosmic nebula, lanes of dust, obscuring the extended diffuse glow of stars, or the unknown fate that befalls every human being. Faint colors with the domination of purple cast onto the main anchor motif focus all attention onto the structural, structural interference which, as the purple in the color spectrum, being a combination of blue and red, is a transitional plane conveying the universal and personal, personal earthly and spiritual aspirations. The intermediality echoes in the stellar band as a transitory realm between terrestrial and cel celestial spheres, represented as if by a human glimpse so tiny and scarce into the vastness of the universe, the majesty of which one could simply not bear, as if in a biblical confrontation of the sacred, the divine which a mortal cannot see. To summarize, the aberration as a particular structure of the worldview developed by Baltrushaitis 
He has established its premises in the painting of Chirlonis, especially in his pictorial cycle, Sonata of the Stars. In fact, we could claim that the thought of Chirlonis is highly aberrative, namely inspiring myth and legends of his own worldview, his own observation of the inner secrets of human and nature into the framework of geometrical forms. It's not the visual appearance that stimulates aberrations to emerge, it, it's the inner symbolic and abstract thinking, the mythopoetic visual thought, that is the gateway of his vi visual system towards the inner, the implicit, the inaccessible. The symbolistic nature of aberration is employed as a promise of finding the ideal medium for reflections of the infinite and the eternal, which could open the limits of cognition and knowledge. Those, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Dėkojame dalį. Ar turime klausimų? Tikrai labai netikėtas ir įdomus pranešimas. Mano toks klausimas, kada mes kalbam apie įtakas vieno menininko kita, kitam, Labai svarbu tas gimbutiškas, gimbutinis, reiškia, antropologiškas požiūris į žmonių bendravimą. Kaip jie buvo pažįstami, kaip jie susirašinėjo, koks buvo, reiškia, kokia bohemo juos vienijo. Nes priešingo atveju tie, tie mūsų, į, į, mūsų teorija gali būti truputėlį, reiškia, tokia privesta prie, prie temos, nepagrista tuo realiu gyvenimu, kurį tie menininkai tuo metu gyveno, nes kiek dabar bėjo suklist, bet Baltrušaitis gerokai pragyveno Čirlionį ir bet buvo ir kartų, reiškia. Tai tikriausiai jūs radot kokių ar laiškų, ar, ar susirašinėjimo, ar bendravimo nuotraukų, kad jie kartu buvo ir tai daug labai paaiškintų ir jūsų teorijos. Tai iš tikrųjų, na, aš kažkaip norėjau parodyti, kad Ta aberacija, kaip pati koncepcija išplėtota Jurgio Baltrušaičio, iš tikrųjų buvo kaip ir anksčiau pasireiškė Čiulionio, Čiulionio darbuose, o šiaip tai jie nebuvo, nebuvo susitikę, nes Mikalaus Konstantinas Čiulionis mirė gerokai anksčiau ir, na, žodžiu, jie prasilenkė, bet... Tiesiog noriu parodyti, kad Čiulionis galėjo būti galbūt ir prototipas tų aberracijų pačiam Jurgiu Baltrušaičiu ir jo teorijai. Taip, taip, bet na... Aš tik tai remarką pasakysiu. Nepaprastai svarbus yra ryšys su tėvų. O Jurgis, aš pats su jo bendravau prieš daugelį metų, vienas iš nedaugelio lietuvių, kur balt prileido Paryžiai, nes jis labai... Tai jo lyšys su tėvų buvo nepaprastai svarbus. Taip pat labai mažai, kas tą akcentuoja, Čirlionio lyšys buvo su tėvų nepaprastai svarbus. Ir aš kada su Čirlionite kalbėjau, prieš, turbūt prieš 50 metų, tai jis ypatingai akcentavo tą lyšys su tėvų. Visur kelionės ir tas labai daug, ką pasako, tik tai galbūt todėl, kad nepaprastai svarbu vaidmenį gyvenime vaidino motiną, kur viskas buvo ant jos pešių, nes tėvas buvo, nu, dzūkas, svajotojas, palikęs vaiką visiškai jaunai ir iškeliavęs į Sibiro platybės. Tai vat, labai daug, labai daug buvo tų, aš netgi galvojau, kokį tą žodį panaudot, tas neprisirišimas prie žemės, o šitas brozas buvo labai svarbus, o motina priešingai. Bet ir iš su tėvų, jisai kultūros istorijoje psichologiškai yra nepaprastai svarbus, nes jisai atsumimo nuo žemės ir labai dažnai į depresijas psichologinį liūną, į kitus dalykus veda. Ir o čia tas ryšys per Baltrušaitį ir Čiulionį yra tiesioginis. Jo lab, kad mažai, kas apie tai kalba ir rašo, tėvo milžinišką vaidmenį Jurgio Baltrušaičio įsilavinime ir kokiose milžiniška vaidmenį vaidino rusų kultūrai. Tai buvo vienas pirmųjų Kirkegoro vertėjų. Daugybė kitų dalykų, kuris įvidinėjo į rusų kultūros erdvę. Ir todėl jo poveikis sūnui buvo tiesiog nepaprastai svarbus. 
Ligiai taip pat, kaip ir, pavyzdžiui, kiti jau atgalima būtų paminėti, kaip Šopengauris Kirkegoras, jisai praktiškai motinas niekur nemini. Ir visur demonstratyviai gyvendamas ne Lietuvos dirbai, visą laiką pabrėžia, kad jisai lietuvis yra, savo tą lietuviškumą. Tai nepaprastai irgi svarbus motyvas, kuris sieja. Nu, čia galima būtų labai daug kalbėti, bet manau, kad jūs labai teisingai daugelį linijų apčiopėt ir labai puikus yra pranešimas, nes tas ryšys labai dažnai sunaus ir vaiko, motinos ir vaiko yra genetinis. Ir labai daug iš minties kitų dalykų pasisemama per senelius, per ketvirtą kartą, lygiai taip pat kaip brožus. Suprantat, labai dažnai stebina portretų žiūry ir pronų, kas pakartoja tiesiog savo prieš ketris. Čia yra tokia genų inžinierija, apie kurios Nu, kalba psichologai, bet tai yra ilga istorija. Dėkojam daliai. Dėkojam daliai.